Hi everyone, so we're going to do an MPLAB X project where we simulate the Atmega 328P processor. So we open up MPLAB X, we're going to create a new project using this icon right here. We're going to choose a standalone project. We're going to say that we want the Atmega 328 as the device, so Atmega 328P. We go OK, we choose uh, XC8 compiler version 2.32 or something similar like 2.20 or whatever, whatever's on your system that you've downloaded previously. We're going to name the project at Mega Lab 1. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. And so now we wait for everything to set up, generate to make files, etc. And you can see the project is in the upper left corner right there. We choose source files. We say new. So we right click on source files, new, and then we choose C main file, or if that isn't appearing on your menu, we do this instead. We go new, other, we choose C for the language, and then C main file right there. Okay, and this will in insert a main file into the source files folder of your project, the project being at Mega Lab one. All right, then we're going to have a blank file right here, not a blank file, but a template file. And, uh, and this, this will compile. It's uh, got some include libraries. It's got the main function right there. We're just going to hit the compile button, the broom and the hammer. And we can see that it was successful down at the bottom where the, uh, the announcements are made. Okay, so we can see build was successful. That's fantastic. And now in this lab, I want you to take a screenshot of this. Okay, so uh, whatever works for you for screenshotting, whether you take a picture of it with your cell phone or you use the screenshot tool in your operating system, whatever, screenshot it and uh, circle in here that you were successful. Okay, so this is the screenshot just like this and you'll submit this onto eClass. All right, so we got a screenshot, fantastic. So let's move on to part two of uh, the lab. And here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna manipulate ports on the simulated Atmega chip. So we're gonna modify the main function. We're gonna change the libraries that are being called. Okay, we'll do that. I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, so right here we put void beside main and we're gonna return zero and we're gonna change the includes to be uh, include xc.h like this. All right, and you have to have the greater than and less than signs right there. And so inside of the main function, I'm going to manipulate the registers inside of the simulated chip. All right, and this is how we do it. So I put some comments in right there. You'll notice it's similar to MATLAB or Java that way. So we're going to make port B, pin 5, an output. Uh, this on a regular Arduino Uno would be port uh, or pin D13, I believe. So we go DDRB or equals and then parentheses 1UL shift DDB5. Okay, and next I'm going to change a value of a bit inside of the port B register. This is pin 5 or bit 5 in there. Okay, so I go port B or equals 1UL shift port B like that, or port, sorry, port 5 right there. Okay, so we're going to shift 1 by 5. Now we're going to do the opposite, and we're going to use a different... Um, statement to make that happen. We're going to use an and equals and a tilde for inversion. So we go port B ampersand equals tilde and the same thing that I had earlier, the one UL shift port five like that. And that will change the bits that are associated with uh, the LED, the pretend LED. Now I'm going to put some um, breakpoints in. Breakpoints are, are done like that where I click on the side of the editor at a particular line value. And I need to make sure that we're in simulator mode. So I go into project properties like that, and I put it in simulator mode. I add some more breakpoints because um, sometimes I want to continue on from one line to another. I hit debug main project like that, and we will end up pausing, breaking on line 21. I hover over DDRB and I can see what the value of that register is or over port B and I can see what the value of that register is, okay? And that's important because what we're doing here, we're going to continue. Now we're going to see what happened to DDRB. It changed value. Now it's 20, 0x20. I'm now going to continue. I'm going to see what happened to port B. Now it's 20. And uh, I'm going to step one more time. I'm going to single step through. And port B should have changed values again. 
after I single step through. And it now is a value of zero. It changed from 20 to zero. Okay, take a screenshot of this. Show that you were able to change the value of port B, one of the registers. Screenshot that and submit it to eClass and we're done.